Hello learners, my name is Sandeep and I'm the instructor at Upgrad. Welcome to the introductory session on the Jupyter Notebook. As part of this program, we'll be primarily using the Python programming language for doing all the major activities across the program. Python, just like any other programming language, requires an integrated development environment, IDE, so that we can run the application and compile the code as well. So there are many other IDEs out there in the internet, but one of the most popular web-based application is Jupyter Notebook, which we'll be using for analyzing our data, code, building statistical models, and drawing many other inferences from it. So in short, you can say the Jupyter Notebook allows us a complete package for different problems that we will face in the program. Now, we will assume that in the previous segment, you have already installed Anaconda framework, which is basically the framework for running the Jupyter Notebook. But now let's have a quick summary of this framework. Anaconda is an open source distribution platform that simplifies the package management and deployment. The package management, Conda, basically manages the package versions of all the libraries that you will be using across the program. So we strongly recommend using Anaconda to install Python. The Anaconda framework enables your system to automatically install the required Python packages. And once it is installed, you can easily load the necessary packages using a simple command import. And as you can see on the screen, there are multiple environments available on the Anaconda, such as Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, PowerShell Prompt, VS Code, Spider, and many other environments as well. And once you've installed Anaconda, you will see all these integrated tools open in this environment. So from now onwards, the next step would be to install the Jupyter Notebook. For this scope here, the Jupyter Notebook is already installed on my system. As you can see over here, the uninstall environments is presented with the install button. And once it is installed, the next button that you can see is a launch button. So you can launch this environment with just a click. So once you have clicked the launch button, you can see the Jupyter Notebook environment will automatically launch in the new tab of your browser. And once it launches, you can see multiple folders, which is basically a representation of all the folders present in your local system. For the presentation, uh, let's click the desktop folder. So here on the right hand side, you will be presented with two major buttons upload and new which basically means that you can either upload a pre-existing notebook in the current folder that is a desktop or create a new notebook entirely using the new button so for now let's create a new button by clicking the python 3 option over here so this will open the new notebook in the new tab and by default it will be named as untitled for the demonstration purpose let's rename it to demo so as you can see here, you will be presented with a cell. By default, it will be colored as blue. And once you start writing in the cell, it would be the color would change automatically to green, which means you are editing the present cell. If you've made it this far in the video, give us a like, a share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, tell us what you want to learn next in the comments and then wait or skip the wait and become a data scientist in just 12 months with the Executive PG program in Data Science from IIIT Bangalore, powered by Upgrad in collaboration with experts from Meta, Mintra, and LinkedIn. Over 20,000 working professionals from over 65 batches have already done this course. Now, back to the video. So as you can see, in the demo notebook that we have created earlier, you can see there are different options in the top bar, like file, edit, view, and many more. So once you click this file option, you will be presented with a menu bar where there are different operations. So here you can see operations like open, making a copy, saving, saving with checkpoint. And here you can even download the notebook in different formats. On the right hand side, uh, you can see under the edit, there are different operations like cutting, copy, pasting, deletion, splitting the cell, and many more. So for now, let's start writing a simple demo code in the notebook, but make sure you select the drop down option as code. 
So here you can see there are different options as well, but you will understand it as we progress further. But now let's click the code option here. So to begin with, I'm writing a simple hello world program where it takes a user name as an input and wishes the user with hello. So I initialize a variable called as name where it takes the user input. It will ask the user to enter your name. And then after that, what we'll do is that we will write for the print statement where we will say that hello. And after that, you need to enter comma such that it prints both text and the custom input that we are passing through variable. So to run this particular cell, what you need to do is that you need to press shift along with enter. So here you can see uh, you are presented with an input bar. So what you will do is that you will enter your name. And once you click the enter, you will be presented with the print statement that is hello Sandhi. So that is how you run the entire cell with your code. Here along with the different options at the top bar, you can see there is a kernel. Kernel is basically a engine of the entire Jupyter notebook. And it basically drives the entire code which you will write in the notebook. You can interrupt the cell that is an engine. You can in, uh, restart it and you can even clear the output by restarting it. So what we'll do now is that we will restart the entire kernel and clear our output as well. So once you click this button, this would be cleared automatically and the inputted code would remain the same, but the output would go away. This drop down menu provides us different authoring modes which are available in our Jupyter notebook. So if you don't want to provide your inputted text as a code format and if you just want to transfer it as just a text format, then what you need to do is that you just pass in markdown as the option over here. And once you have selected this markdown feature, then all the subsequent text written in this cell would be treated as just text. It would not be treated as a code. There are multiple variations under which you can write the heading, subheadings and descriptive text. So let's try to understand that. So here you have to uh, first of all select the markdown feature and then inside this cell you can pass in your text. In order to convert this text into heading or a title you need to provide the hash before the text. The uh, number of hashes would determine the type of formatting. If you provide just one hash the text would be treated as title. If you have double hash then the text would be treated as a heading. Adding one more hash would make the text as a subheading and further adding one more hash would make the heading even smaller. At the end, if you had one more hash which makes total occurrences of five, then the text would be converted to an italic one. So once you have provided all the formattings to the text, all you need to do is just press shift and enter just like we have done in the coding cell. So after this, you can see the output. Now let's understand some more uh, formatting options in our markdown cells. In order to convert our text into bold, what you need to do is that you can either add double underscore before and after the text. Similarly, you can provide double star sign before and after the text, which would make the text uh, formatted to bold. If you add just one dash, then the text would be converted to an italic one. And similarly, if you add one star, the text would be converted to an italic one as well. Adding one more star would make the text both bold and italic. So now if you press shift and enter, you can see in the output over here. So with this kind of formatting, you're now ready to go ahead and work with Jupyter Notebook. And that's a wrap on your first Hello World in Jupyter Notebook. From just a few line of codes, you have started a conversation with the future. But this is only the prologue to your journey with Jupyter. Ahead lies a path rich with possibilities. Markdown cells for your notes, magic commands for efficiency and shortcuts that turn complexity into simplicity. So stay with us, 
keep exploring keep coding and keep sharing your insights be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to receive updates from our channel next up we will be diving deeper into jupiter's features and trust me you don't want to miss it see you in the next segment where your journey through coding continues